Now we're just gonna bet someone's just gonna flag this just because the hat, even though it has nothing to do with this. Even if I go take the hat off, stay up there, stay up there, and replace it with college hat. I'm betting you someone's gonna flag it, even though it has nothing to do with it. Anyways, felt like wearing a hat, so why not? Um, today I'm going to talk about, uh, oh wait, I probably should, uh, introduce myself. Hello, I'm Ashton Snap. Hello, how are you doing? Okay, time to get on what we're doing. We're gonna talk about making a tiny computer. I have no clue what I'm doing because I'm a computer science scientist, not an electrical engineer, so I have no clue if we need like capacitors or transistors or resistors, whatever the heck we need. I have no clue about that, and I don't know what kind of ports we should put on there. I know we need like a PS2 port, maybe a VGA. I don't know. But uh, I do kind of have a parts list of sorts. I parts list, I mean a bunch of freaking web tabs. So first of all, we basically have the heart of the computer. The microprocessor, which is this uh, 65, <coughs> excuse me, 65816 from Western Digital. If you've ever heard of the uh, of the processor and the com and the Commodore machines, this is basically a successor to that. It's 16 bit, 16 bit instead of 8 bit, but it does have an 8 bit compatibility mode that it boots into default by default. You have to type in two different assembly commands in order to switch it over to the 16-bit data bus. And, uh, let me think. Um, it has a... If I actually go over to the data sheet... Look at that. Um, it's got a 24-bit uh, address bus. It lets it access up to 16 megabytes. So if you take all the memory from the Commodore 64, or even the Commodore 128, that thing could read it all in one go. And it would still have room to spare. Like, a lot of room to spare. This thing is freaking... Like, um, and, you know, but that's just, like, the microprocessor. For, um, what, like, one thing about doing for the, uh, like, the video, like, I... There's, they don't, I can't really find, like, a specialized video chip. So, for that, I'm plan I'm going to, probably going to use a, a PIC, um, microcontroller, 16-bit. It has, let's see, 512 kilobytes of program memory, and then 48 kilobytes of data memory, data RAM. And a you know, 16 bit data bus with just like the uh, the microprocessor. So, you know, it goes with that. And it's a. And also, the. Like, the thing. Like, this is PDIP 40. If you don't know what that means, it's plastic dual inline package 40 pin. I don't know why. You have to specify that it's plastic. It's probably, like, maybe the holes are different. I don't know. I don't know. I've frankly over, 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 only ever heard of dip. I've never heard of P dip or this thing, which is SP dip, which apparently shrink plastic uh, dual line pack. It's just 28 pin. And then uh, you have this, which is from um, which is basically this is an an EEPROM. It's got it's four megabits, which four megabits is like half a megabyte. Or uh, 500 kilobytes if you use if you go by the metric thing, but you know half a mega a megabyte would be technically be 512. But you know we ain't we ain't nitpicking here. We ain't we ain't nitpicking? That's you know it's a uh, one-time programmable because nobody puts freaking UV windows on these anymore. So if you know there is some sort of bug in the OS, I know the patches have to be on a separate chip, which which means this thing definitely would need to be socketed. Um, for the RAM, it's, it's we have this um, static RAM. Again, it is uh, half a megabyte or four four megabits. Actually, looked if we look on uh, let's see, uh, one megabyte, two megabits. 
we do that and it says a megabyte is eight megabits. So you know. So we have a four megabit megabits of of static RAM. And you know that's so it's half a megabyte right there. If we get two of these, then we have a full megabyte. And you know right now it says there's 682 that can ship immediately from Mauser, which is the site I'm using because it's you know it's international. Everyone can contact them. Of course, I'm in the U.S., so it doesn't really matter to me, but it might matter to you because I don't know where you live, and I don't want to know. Don't tell me where you live. Because somebody will see your address and decide to be a freaking... I don't even know how to describe it. And by the way, this is like the uh, the, micro the microcontroller I'm going to use for the video. I don't know really how I'm going to do it. What I'm thinking is like... I know that the program memory... Uh, the program memory you could probably use for, uh, you know, the actual... Like, okay, this is how you draw the certain... Um, like, that's how it would be, like, this is how you learn, learn the certain what have you. And then the RAM, that, because, like, I'm thinking about doing, like, color cells, just like the old Commodore machines did. And, you know, 48 uh, kilobytes for the character cells. I heard footsteps, sorry. <laughs> I'm in a dorm room, so I'm going to hear footsteps. <laughs> You never know when someone's gonna open the door. I'm like, gonna go lock. There we go. Um, and also, it's got other stuff on here like operating voltage, minimal operating temperatures, operating temperature, and maximum operating temperature. So basically, you better not chill it to under 40 degrees Celsius, or else it ain't gonna work. You don't get it hotter than 85, or else it ain't gonna work. And don't give it more than, what does it say, 3.6 volts? Yeah. Man, even with glasses, my eyesight still sucks. I might need to get a new prescription. Or either that, or actually not, I think I have a better idea. Let's use the thing that's meant for old people. Yeah, let's freaking zoom the page in. There we go, it's meant for old people. But I have old person eyesight since birth, so I'm using it. Screw you. Uh, trade name pick, yeah, it's a pick microcontroller. I was actually talking about this project with somebody at a nearby uh, store that sells like electro like electronics and other nerd stuff. I play I've been playing uh, Stars Against Number with some people over there. I have some pretty cool stories like how I uh, how one of our uh, uh, crew our crew members, one of the players accidentally cloned himself into a quantum memory core. That's you know, an interesting story. Uh, anyways, I'm getting off track. Um, I'm not gonna include any flash memory, though. I might include a SD connector, and that'll basically be the the floppy drive, except it's not like floppy. Yeah, memory card connectors. I don't want them. I don't want them. I want memory cards. And I'm just, I'm thinking about just just doing normal SD card because I'm sick and tired of not being able to put a freaking Nintendo Switch memory card into the thing to read off of it, or what's even more frustrating, not being able to freaking reset the freaking uh, micro SD card that came with my Raspberry Pi 3 it's because the freaking operating system, the password stopped working, and now I can't freaking use it, and I'm stuck in the freaking memory freaking media center OS. Ugh, why did the password break? Yeah, that's what, what happens when you try to set the password to something other than the uh, default. It just decides it doesn't want to work anymore, and it's frustrating. Uh, number of contacts. Does it, does, it, does, it, does it matter? Does that actually matter? Does that actually matter? I don't know if that actually matters. Oh boy, I need to do more freaking research. <sighs> I oh, don't know, let me... Oh, I had SD cards back at home. Uh, I had a freaking SD card back at home. I know I had like a 4 gig one back at home that I don't use anymore because I took it out of my 3DS. Um, it's not a new 3DS, it's an old 3DS. It's an SD card instead of a micro SD. But I took it out and replaced it with a different one and I tried to do homebrew on it. 
which was fun until the homebrew stopped working, and now I'm just stuck with the vanilla. I'm sad. Whatever, we should probably go back to all products. Let's see, connectors. I know, like, a uh, circular connector, that's how we'd have to connect the keyboard. It'd be a uh, din, yeah. Din, 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 din. Um, uh, mini din, female. Let's see, what's the specification for PS2 port? PS2 port, PS2 port. It's a six pin mini din. Six, six or six con. Oh, okay, let's just. Six. 26 matches remaining. Uh, well, it's a socket, so obviously it's a receptacle. Uh, termination style. Uh, sort of pins. Mounting style through hole. Yeah, okay. We have six remaining, and they're all um, they're T E connectivity, Kaikon, T E connectivity, a T connectivity, and what 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 the what the I don't even know how to describe that. <laughs> looks like it looks like a. Cake in a frying pan, except it's kind of looks like it kind of busted out of the bottom. Wow, that's just wow. Okay, and they're all solder tail, except for this one, which is nothing. You compare up to twenty parts, so I got six matches. Yay! This is all, and they're all solder tail, except for that one, which is solder pin, but it's end of life, so we can't use that one. Let's see, which one has the most in stock? Clearly, this part's broken. Uh. Looks like this one from TE Connectivity. It's a uh, gold contact plating, and it's also the cheapest. Huh, okay. There we go. This is our little DIN connector that we're going to use for a PS2 keyboard. I can probably include another DIN or maybe a D sub for other peripherals, or maybe even have a D sub for a user board. That would be interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I wish I knew what it was doing. So what happens when a kid tries to make a retro microcomputer when he was born in freaking 2000? Like way, like a good bit after the time of those things. Which main reason I had this idea was because of like the 8-bit guy's post on his own dream computer. But this is basically that post, like that idea kind of Splooshed into my head and kind of jiggled around a bit and mixed up and get even coating of whatever juices are in my head. That sounds gross. Um, like just kind of you know, swivel it around in there and then take it out and that that's basically this idea. <laughs> See an error. Um, yes, for some reason all this is in make in is in uh bits. Is that in bits? Why bits? Why bits? Okay, we can just uh, get rid of those, and I think we can actually probably end this video. How long have I been going? We have been recording for 14 minutes exactly. Wow. Alright, let's just uh, camera scene. There we go. There we go. I am right here. Whoa. Hi. Again. Okay, that's basically the end of the video. You know, just because for the end of the video, I'm going to wear the freaking MAGA hat. You know, because well, why not? Because why not? Okay. Uh, conclusion. Um, it's not a public speech. It's a YouTube video. Stop thinking about comments. I actually probably should think about comments because I have a speech on Thursday with the rest of my group. I should probably do my math homework too. Uh, 
Oh, I don't know how to end this off. I'm just going to say subscribe if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, if you want to like, then hit like. If you don't, hit dislike. And if you want to say anything, go down in the comments. Do whatever the heck you want to. And uh, have fun, my bananas.